Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite gimp with a limp. We are joining right back in here with Mr. Barry Burton as he's trying to do Operation Mad Jackal. We're going to keep pushing on where we left off. Uh, we've got our one little zombie left here. We've got a few rounds left in our handgun, so we're going to try to take him out. Or actually, I think this is a chick zombie. Take her out. And then there's a couple of openings over here, archways, which it didn't really describe in Operation Mad Jackal when to show, like when you get up to the archways for the next uh, tile. So I think I'm just going to take and uh, treat it like a like a door. Like it's not activation, but once I get up to it, like this square, then it will activate, like show me what's in there. So let's take and fire here. We will spend one round. We'll take this down for our first action, down to eight rounds left in our magazine. Hopefully this little chickadee will go down. Please hit her, hit her, hit her, hit her, hit her, hit her. Nice. All right, so that is our first action. She's down. We will be getting a tension card uh, from it, which I'm actually going to go ahead and just throw into our deck because there's no more enemies on the board and I know I'm going to run out of actions before I have to take and attack anymore. And I can go ahead and see what this A item is, but the thing of it is, is like, yeah, why not? Because my inventory is full. Barry doesn't have a big inventory and you start off full with him as it is. Actually, I think it's more than full, but regardless, the starting items, uh, he's pretty well topped off, but I can see what's there just in case I want to come back and try to get it later. So that was one action. Two actions. Does this bleed over? I think I can make that over the corner. So we'll go three, four. We'll draw a tension card. I think we're still in green. We're still in green. Um, we will spend one action to check. Let's draw our A card. It's another damn green herb. Okay, that sucks. I wanted something better, but health is better than nothing. Actually, I could. Okay, I could basically burn out the rest of his actions and waste a little time here, like dropping something, picking up the green herb, using it, and then picking back up whatever I drop to heal him back up because I had taken one little bit of damage. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll do that. I'll waste the rest of my actions burn it out. There we go. Use a green herb, but that's going to cost me another tension card. Not cool. All right. I think I've got more room on my table that way. So I'm going to pop that direction. So let me move the camera up a little bit more forward because we're going to go one, two, and see what is revealed here. And that is going to be, what is this? No, this is the nemesis. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's only one nemesis card in the Mad Jackal deck. And I've already hit it. This is not good. That is one big opening. So that's going to go there. And unfortunately, this is not a door. This is a archway, which means I cannot close it. So the nemesis just spawned right there. Uh, with no item for it, there is a door back in the very, very back. Let me grab a token to represent that. Okay. I got two actions left, and I don't think I want to fight the nemesis. I wonder if I can outrun this guy. Um, oh, how fast is he? Let me look. He, I got to grab his card. He is going to be at a different stage. He's not going to be at the base stage. He's going to be at a higher level. So this is the nemesis that we're actually going to fight. And you see the symbol up here in the very top left, the one that looks kind of like a, a bite, right? So that shows us what level nemesis we have to fight. This is bad. That means he has 10 health instead of five. Beating him means he drops a B item, but that is 10 health. Now to keep track of his health, we do have a dial here. And it's already set to 10 from when I fought him before, so that's good. Oh, that is not good, though. He does he does massive damage. He does two at a minimum, three 
maximum and he can do it from a range of one. So he does not have to be right next to you and he's going to be reacting. I think I almost should run uh, on this guy because he's threat level four. So that's four cards if I can beat him, but I don't have any uh, B items yet to go after him. So I think we're going to, we're going to run. <laughs> we're, we're going to do this. So we're going to go one, two, and that will finish out the rest of my actions. We'll do another Mad Jackal card and we'll see what's off in this right direction. Our next card is not good. <laughs> Son of a butt. Let me grab a, a thing. All right, so I got the stuff for it. Let's put down that in the archway. There is a barrel, exploding barrel there. There is an A item there. And worst of all, there is a drain demos right here, <laughs> right there where I'm getting ready to go. And that is this fella here. He does uh, damage depending again on whether or not that is blue or purple. That has to do with this color here at the bottom. And we have burned through a lot of tension cards, which means we should be running into some purple ones here soon. Uh, he ignores a lot of stuff since he's a wall crawler. Uh, moves two and has three health. Oh no, threat level three. This guy's this guy's bad. I just got hit with two hard enemies right at the same time and I'm out of actions, which means it is to their reaction phase. Let's rotate the camera a little bit because we're gonna be going to war over here and I know I'm gonna be rolling some dice because I gotta try to take this guy uh, down. Oh, not good, not good, not good. All right, that is only three cards so far for the uh, for the deck for Mad Jackal. So you guys can see there's a lot that you have to get through. Usually you're not in running into all of this. It's a lot more of a uh, crows, zombies, stuff like that. Uh, I just happened to hit a couple of hard enemies right here at the same time. It, it's all right. It's nothing but a thing. So their reaction phase, they're going to move everyone who is connected to me on my tile or linked tiles. Both of these are linked tiles since these are archways and they're open. Uh, he only moves one, but he does move two, which means he's going to be attacking me. So Nemesis comes up, and if I were here, he could attack me, but he's not. He's going to go bing, bing. And unfortunately, since he is a medium-based enemy, it means that I will only dodge him if I have that symbol or that symbol. This symbol does not count for a dodge when the enemy's medium. Basically, the more of a square that's filled up, the harder it is to be dodged. Uh, each one of these squares can effectively hold four small bases. So you can have three small enemies or one medium and a small or something like that, you know, the that adds up to four. And the more filled the square is, the harder it is for you to dodge. So if there were one more enemy in here, I would only be able to dodge successfully on that. So his attack is going to be, our last tension card was a blue, so it's only gonna be one potential, so that's not horrible. Uh, I have to make my dodge attempt. Let's slide our dice tower over here and roll. And yes, I did get a dodge, so that is good. He misses. Uh, let's draw another tension card. Tension card, ooh, this one's purple, which means they're gonna be hitting harder uh, now. Okay, all right, I've got four actions. What do I wanna do? I have to deal with a uh, dummy here right off the bat, because if I don't, oh, yeah, I, I gotta deal with him. I gotta like back him off of me, because if I try to move, since we're in the same square, he can hit me like right off. So I have to, I have to do it. We're going to have to go with a shotgun in hopes of doing some uh, bigger damage here, I guess. Uh, it's more likely to get, well, no, because I can't get a push with the shotgun. All right, I've got four actions. Hmm. The shotgun is very likely to cause him damage. But it's not very likely to cause him excess damage. I think my pistol might be actually the best bet on causing him damage because there is a chance that I can push him back off of me. And the reason I say that is these this guy's going to move up. He's going to go one, two. So two attacks. If I haven't pushed this guy back, 
uh, that's going to be a problem. So yeah, yeah, we're going to go with pistol instead. We're going to drop down another bit of ammo. So first action is firing with the pistol. Try. I'm actually hoping for a push on this one so I can push him away from me and attack him from a distance. And I get two damage, which is actually good. It's good. I want damage, but I, oh, I can't have the nemesis on top of me. Oh, not, not good. Oh, and I forgot to put something on there. Hold on. Let me grab it. There is a doorway back here to get out. Okay, so that's that direction. I can either sneak around big boy here or go around. All right, so he's moving up because of that attack. So I have to attack again. Second action, we're going to move it down. Pistol's running out of ammo, but I do have extras. So let's roll, see what I get. And that actually kills him. That will kill him, okay? So he's dead from three damage. Okay, all right. Um, and I'm actually gonna get a decent amount of tension cards out of this. And I know I'm not gonna kill him, so that's actually gonna be three tension cards for me. One, two, three. And I mean during this action round, I know I'm not going to kill him because I got two actions left. There's no way I'm going to get him killed. And he's moved up to there. All right, let me think here for a sec. Uh, I actually need to check the rules because he can attack me from here. Um, he might get an attack since he's moved up in range. Let me eyeball that. Okay, so just making sure on it, their reactions to me performing attacks do not cause them to attack unless they're in the same square as me and I'm attacking a different enemy. So the Drain Demos that was in the same square as me, I actually got lucky because he didn't, um, he wasn't uh, missed. I hit him each time that I fired at him, which means he didn't get a chance. Had I missed, then he would have done damage to me. But if he had moved up and gotten to the same square, now he couldn't actually fit with a drain demos because it would be too much in one square. But that would cause problems. Like he would be considered in range and attacking me. So uh, it's a whole thing. But I got two actions left. And I don't know where to go now because I can run that way. I can run that way. I need to get out of here. I don't want to have the, the nemesis right on top of me. Let's, um, I got two actions left. Well, there's exploding barrel there. Maybe I run this direction and pop over there. And as soon as he gets next to the exploding barrel, I shoot the barrel, cause some damage to him. Yeah, that could work because it's a guaranteed hit for that. So we're going to go one, two, and we'll check that A item as we move along. All right, I actually took a second, slid all this over on the table so I could give myself uh, some room to pop these tiles out. Now I'm actually getting myself a little bit of a break by not shuffling that tension deck. That is something I am supposed to be doing, but I'm just throwing them on the bottom to make it easier uh, and a little faster when filming, but that is giving me a break because I could be potentially encountering harder tension deck cards, but there's already so many in here, they're gonna be getting me soon anyway. And the deck that I'm adding to it is already shuffled, so we're pretty well good on that. Um, reaction phase for them, he's gonna move. If he were one square closer, he'd be in range, but he's not, so I'm still good. That puts it into my phase. Uh, so is that a door? That is another archway, which means I need to just throw that open. Uh, archway, archway, archway. That is not good. That means all of these are linked tiles. I can't shut anything. If I could get through here and shut the door, then he wouldn't be a problem anymore, but he's gonna be a problem. So let's go. One action, we'll do a search to see what is there. That is handgun bullets. And, all right, so I got two actions left. I could go ahead and reload and pick these up. Yeah, that's what I think I'm going to do. So basically I'm gonna burn my actions out to refill my handgun back up with its ammo and that lets old boy get closer to me, but 
we're going to have to just deal with it because I want to try to get him with this barrel. This barrel will do damage to people who are in that square and around it. I think it's two if you're in the square and then one to everyone around. So uh, we'll have to see how that uh, how that pans out. Uh, we'll give him his reaction move. We'll draw a tension card. Still doing good. All right. Now I've got four more actions. We'll go one and pull this off because it's not there anymore. This is going to get another Operation Mad Jackal card. And what is this? There's a locked. No, there's a barricade. It's a freaking barricade, man. <laughs> That's so cool. All right. Let me move the camera over just a little bit and grab a tile. All right. I like this one. I think we'll go with that. And that means it's going to go there because the start is right here. So we'll have this archway here. There is another A item, plenty of A items here. There are two zombies uh, here and here. All right, so moving there was one action. So I've got three actions left. So if I move forward one and fire, that'll get him to move forward one and then yeah, I can get a hit. I'm not going to move him right on the barrel because I think that's too cheap to get some damage going on him. All right, I need one door. And we'll throw that here. And a barricade. All right, I think I found ourselves a little barricade token here, which I do believe can be busted through. So let's throw that down there. And I've got three actions left. We're going to go one. And then I'm going to fire. Bring our little thing up, our freshly reloaded ammo, drop it down to 14. So yeah, this is my third action taking the shot. I'm going to go ahead and move everything up so I don't forget. All right, and we're firing at that zombie. And I got the hit. Yes, zombie dead. All right, zombie dead. Good deal. I've got one action left. I'm going to turn and fire at the barrel, which is guaranteed one damage onto a uh, big boy. That way I can tick him down at least a little bit and try to plink him as he goes. I think that's the, the safe bet, but that is going to get a reaction from the attack, which means he's going to go here and this zombie is going to go here. I'm going to take some damage. But that's all right. That's all right. We'll, we'll survive. I should be able to clear this zombie out on the next one and hopefully run past and maybe shoot down onto him later. All right. So we are to their reaction phase. Uh, since I don't have anyone in here. Um, no, I think with the reaction phase, uh, I'm, I'm blanking out. If we're to the reaction phase, did I move them up? Because I think shooting the barrel caused him to move up and him to move up, which means the reaction phase, they're both going to move up into my hex and I'm going to get attacked. We're giving them the best possible attack, which means he is going to be swinging at me with this and trying to hit me. And if he does, that is going to be uh, a lot of damage. Three damage and a push. Now, since the zombie is here, I will only succeed on a roll of that, all right? Because basically the, the square is filled. It's just so much going on in there. So let's roll, see if I do evade this big whammy attack. And no, I do not evade the big whammy attack, even with two dice. All right, so. We are down into caution. I believe we're going to go one, two, three. Ooh, that is bad. I am definitely in caution. But he did push me in the direction I was going. All right. It's okay. It's okay. We'll push up. We'll move over. And let me read real quick. I want to check something on barricades. Okay, so this will actually create us an extra opening here. That is a barricade, which means I can spend an action to open it. And I want to try that and see what it is. So we're going to go one, two, 
three to open and four might be using my healing item depending on what yeah four is gonna be a healing item i think i think that's gonna be appropriate um yeah we'll go with outside look <clears throat> all right so i got one action left i think we're going to have to burn my first aid spray because i'm afraid if i don't use it then i'm not going to have it for later so we're going to use that and pop myself back up to fine which means we are going to be into their reaction phase and he's going to come over he's going to come over he's going to come up and both of these two are going to come up. I just have feelings I've made bad juju. I either have to run by all these zombies or something because I'm getting ready to get chewed into the ground <laughs> uh, on this. At least I'm back up to full health, but it's not looking looking too good. It's all right. I think I, I think I can work this out. We've done a little damage to Nemesis, but there's only four zombies. We, we got the Samurai's Edge. We can deal with this. All right, so... That's their reaction phase. Let's draw a tension card. And I think we are right out about of our greens. Nope, we got one green. That is a yellow green though. Oof. So this is what we have left of the tension deck, including what I've added to it. And this is what we've burned through. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. I should have a fair amount of those. And actually to make the game just a little bit more fair, I'm gonna go ahead and shuffle this up since I'm getting ready to cut here. Uh, that way it will be unknown because I know there were five more because I start with 15 greens to start the deck with. And I am supposed to be shuffling these up each round as I'm adding them to it. And I'm giving myself a little bit too much of a, an edge there in trying to speed up my filming process and I don't want to do that but the uh, good thing is there are greens in the cards that are getting added to this tension deck but there are also yellows and reds which add potential enemies and other pitfalls of what's going on all right I was planning on this being the last uh, video for the series but we'll probably end up doing one more since I've survived a little longer than anticipated uh, like I said I did play this off camera a few times and I thought it would go quicker. It just takes longer when you're filming because there's so much of it I spend talking and explaining what I'm doing. It's just, yeah, how it works when you're playing a, a board game online. Honestly, though, I got to say, this game mode is my favorite part of the board game thus far. Now, the can I'm not hating on the campaign or anything like that. The campaign, uh, campaign, campaign plays very similar to what you guys are seeing here with the exception of my BS mistakes. Uh, for getting crap and reactions as I'm going through. Uh, but the campaign plays similar. You know, it starts off easier, which is zombies and dogs and bull crap like that. And you work up to better weapons all the way to the grenade launcher and magnum like at the end. Uh, cool stuff. If you like board games and you like Resident Evil, I mean, absolutely, Resident Evil 3 is a good one to jump into. I just think that they did a disservice by separating this part out into an expansion instead of it being part of it now i'm not sure i do not believe it was a kickstarter exclusive i'll have to look at the kickstarter again to be sure uh but i'm really hoping it's not because Op operation mad jackal really just uh makes the game it brings it together because you can play a campaign but once you've played through the campaign you kind of you know have seen it you've gone through it you know but this it so reminds me of my childhood of sitting there playing the game and tossing off the controller. And like I said, you could even play it two, pa uh, two player if you wanted to, you know, ch uh, twist up the difficulty a little bit uh, to make things harder if you need to, uh, if you want to have it to play with someone else. But that was one of my funnest times playing Resident Evil 3 Nemesis back in the day was uh, playing it that way. It was uh, my brother and I and a couple of buddies just sitting back and forth trying to see how far we could get. And I did... I know we were kids. We were 10 or 12 or something like that when Resident Evil 3 came in out. Uh, I'd have to go back and look, but we were, we were young, maybe mid-teens at best. Uh, so we didn't ever beat it. We tried, but it was, you know, not in our, our purview. It really blows my mind. I see some people playing the 
the game now, like the, the video game, and they can blow it away. They've got it down to such a science, which shows you how good the video game was that there are still people playing it to this day, right? But that remake, that remake, you're not going to have people playing that remake in, in 10 years, in 20 years. No, that's not going to happen because that Resident Evil 3 remake was just straight trash. And if Capcom ever sees this, which I doubt because my channel's smaller and shit, I'm kiss getting sponsored goodbye, but yeah. Anyway, you guys stay tuned. I'll do one more uh, round, one more video showing uh, Matt, uh, Operation Mad Jackal here, see how much farther I get with it, see if I can maybe potentially take out uh, Nemesis. I'm thinking Shotgun Blast this direction, try to kill off these zombies right here. Uh, might be my best bet, spread them out a little bit, you know, kind of like how you do in the video game, and then maybe run uh, down here. And I forgot, again, to put down a damn door. We'll put down a door. Right, meow, that was where the door will go. So if I can blow these guys down, I can run up in this direction, maybe get up here, close the door, and, and push on with my life. All right, that's going to be it for this one. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.